Hello, my name is Steve Foxworth, and I'm a certified examiner and instructor for the Equine Lameness Prevention Organization. Uh, in this video, we will be covering the update for the current uh, live sole hoof mapping certification and barefoot certification. This will also be a study guide for those of you who are choosing to attend or get certified through the ELPO. The first section of this video, we're going to cover live sole hoof mapping. Now, in the past, live sole hoof mapping has been done on um, actual horses, live horses, and we've, we've learned that it's important for everybody to understand how to find these landmarks and to do it correctly. Uh, it seems to be easier and more proficient to be able to do it on a cadaver limb. So the exam has now switched to doing it on two feet of a cadaver limb. So what I'm gonna go over is the live sole hoof mapping on this particular horse. The other thing that's interesting about this is that we've actually added the grading scale. So we, the ELPO has a um, hoof distortions grading scale. And so I'm gonna teach that to you today, show it to you today. It's on the website that can be downloaded quite easily. Uh, all of the information is there to help you with your study guide. The very first thing that we'll do whenever we start our examination is we'll ask you to take a look at the conformation of the foot. And the things that are important, this, this whole thing is about developing a map or having a system to be able to read the foot. If you're not able to read the foot, then you're gonna miss things and you're gonna get confused and you're gonna leave something. But our whole goal in all of our certifications is to make sure that you understand what you're doing before you do it. So when you look at this foot, I would say from the side, you look at the conformation, it's a fairly normal conformation. It's a fairly, uh, it's not an upright foot or a low foot. It, the toe is not excessively long. The heels are a little bit forward, but are not excessively long. And when you look at it from the front, there is some flaring here and a little bit asymmetric. Uh, it's a little bit asymmetric. But for the most part, that's a somewhat normal foot, uh, average foot that we would take a look at. So the very first thing that you need to do whenever you start this exam is take a look at the foot. We need to know if it's an upright foot or a club foot, if it's a flat foot or a negative plane foot. And it also helps if you let us know whether it's pigeon toed or toed out. So all of those things are information that you should be putting in your mind before you trim the foot. So the very first thing that all of us do when we pick up a foot is we generally pick it out. You can see that this, where all the dirt is compacted. You can see that, and I don't know if you can see it from that angle, but right here there's a ridge. This is a part of the sole that's on the ground and the wall is actually off the ground, broken off in some of the areas. Here are your heels. There's actually support through the center of this foot with the dirt that's packed in. You can see just with two swipes, we can now start to see our frog. So in, in all of our certifications, one of the very first things that we need to do is find the static reference uh, that we consider, we call the dimple in the back part of the foot. Now, sometimes you need to clean this up a little bit. You can see I just grabbed this loose tag, pop that off. You want to be able to see this V very clearly. There are three ways to find the dimple in the back part of the foot. One is looking at the V in the back part of the frog. The second, is there is a little slight indention right here and right here that your thumb will fall into. When you have that V, just on the inside of that is what you're looking at, the, the apex of that, not back here. It is just inside, okay? The other thing that we're looking at is where the heel and the frog meet on either side. Now, those lines generally line up with all three marks and you have what we call the back part of the foot, the dimple, our starting point, our static reference that everything goes off of from there. So in the ELPO uh, distortions protocol, the hoof evaluation protocol, we're going to assess three things or four things. We're going to assess the frog, we're going to assess the bars, we're going to assess the heels and the toe length. So after we found our dimple in the back part of the foot, 
It's our starting point to help us find our central sulcus. So what we're looking at is from the dimple, this one is a little bit hard to see. I'm gonna to try to draw it out for you. You can almost feel the frog start to, the central sulcus start to come up and comes to a point. So we'll take the length of our central sulcus and we'll double that. And that should be our true apex of the frog. Okay, now we'll make a mark where that is. You can see that this frog actually is quite rounded, looks very nice, and that our central sulcus length is the same as our, the length to the apex of our frog. So that would be considered a zero position. So again, we're using the central sulcus to grade the length of the frog. The central sulcus length doubled, and ending there is a zero position. If the frog was here, the end of the frog was there, and we took that, and we measured it, we would know that that frog is a half of an inch longer than where the true frog apex should be, which means this frog would then be a two. But it's not, this is a very nice frog, all of you can see that. So, first measurement, the length of the frog, the next thing we're gonna assess is the frog width, okay? So we'll use the exact same measurement of the length of the central sulcus. Now, we'll take that measurement and we're gonna measure from where the frog and heel come together Okay, to see how wide the frog is. If the frog is a quarter of an inch more than the central sulcus, okay, or if the, at least a quarter of an inch more, or more than that, it's a zero position, or a zero uh, grade. If it's equal to the central sulcus, so if the frog was equal to, it would be a one. Then, it, and it goes up from there 10 to 20%, 35 to 40% you know, for each increment. But what we're looking for is that the frog, a healthy frog width, should be greater than the central sulcus. The last grade that we're looking at is what we call the central sulcus quality. Now, when you look at our grading scale, you'll see that what we're looking at is does the central sulcus, is it open? And does it have a rounded bottom to it. And what do I mean by a bottom to it? If I was to take a dividers, calipers, uh, a nail, I don't care what it is, and stick it in the central sulcus, does it stop? I know everybody that has been able to see a central sulcus where you're able to push it and it goes all the way up and through the, heel, the hairline and the heel bulbs in the back. So the narrower the central sulcus gets and the deeper crack or crevice it gets, the higher the grade it gets. So make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to grade some more central sulcuses here later on. So after we've assessed our frog, the next thing we're gonna assess is our heels. And what we're looking at is where the last weight-bearing surface, or the last weight-bearing spot of your heel is, okay? If you take a look, you can see the distance that the heels have grown from the dimple, okay? The dimple is the starting point and how we assess the position of the heels is by the length of our central sulcus again. So we're still using this. It's a very important measurement or a tissue or structure to find as the apex of the central sulcus. So as the heels start to grow forward, okay, as they start to grow forward, it goes up in scale. 20% is a one, 40% is a two, 60% is a three, 80% is a four, and if it's the length of the central, if the heels are ending all the way up here, at the length of the central sulcus or greater, it's a five. After we have assessed our heel position, the next thing we're gonna look at is the position of our bars. So we will draw that in. What we're looking at is to see if the bars are laid over, or are they straight? What is the curvature? 
Now, how we assess this is we stick our dividers or calipers. These again are quarter inch wide. If you lay the straight edge along the edge of the frog, okay, half of an inch from the edge of the frog over is a zero position. Every quarter of an inch after that goes up in grade. So this would be a one, two, that would be a three. By the time we get to there, we're going to be at a three. So we've got a three on this side. And if we take it and flip it over here, I don't know if you can see that quite well, and we flip this down, that's a one. It's a two on this side. So what we're trying to figure out is, is this greater than this is? Because it gives us information, okay? So this is a two, or this is a three, and this is a two. The last thing that we're gonna assess is our toe length. Now, because we have found the true apex of the frog and double checked it by our central sulcus length, we can start by using the apex of the frog to measure back one inch on a size ought to small two to help us find the widest part of the foot. Now, you can also see that there is a swell that happens right here. So if this tissue is coming down, it, it comes to a spot, a hump, a swell, and then it starts to change direction and go out. This one does the same thing. It's coming down. There's a swell or a hump right here, and then it starts to change direction. We also use the widest part of the sole, but as you can see on some of these horses, you're not going to be able to get an accurate measurement of the widest part of the sole. So if you can find the true apex of the frog, get back an inch and it correlates with the swells, uh, you're fairly close to the widest part of the foot. If you take that and just draw a line across there, that is our widest part of the foot. So how we get our toe length is we are looking for about a 50-50 ratio around the widest part of the foot. We'll take a measurement from the central sulcus to the widest part of the foot. Take that, set it on there, flip it forward, and you get a quarter of an inch, which is a zero. So this toe length is about a two. A quarter of an inch beyond that is a zero, and then we've got one, two, and that's how we assess our toe length. While you're doing this, you're going to have to write down your numbers. This is the ELPO hoof evaluation sheet that you will be required to fill out. You can see that the white boxes are the befores and the gray boxes will be after. This is a sheet that will be included in all of our certifications from here on out. So when we go back over what we assessed with this, the frog length is a zero, the frog width is a zero, and the central sulcus is healthy, it is also a zero. Both the lateral and the medial heels are a three, the lateral bar was a three, the medial bar was a two, and the toe length was a two. After we've assessed all of our distortions, the next thing we're going to do is go into the live sole hoof mapping. So how we do that is, is we need to first start by exfoliating the foot and removing any of the chalky material until it becomes waxy. And what I'm talking about is you can see that there's chalk here as I go to pop that until the sole becomes waxy. Now you can see I've already got, I've got half of this started to be exfoliated. I still have this side to exfoliate. And one of the things that I wanted to show you is the depth of your apex, or the depth of the, the apex of the frog, as well as just the depth in your commissures. It's, it's important to understand whether the foot is a flat foot or it has a lot of cup or depth to it. Paying attention to that is going to help you on whether, uh, to, to help you not over exfoliate the foot or under exfoliate the foot. Both has their challenges. So you can see on this side, there's a, a plane that goes from where we've exfoliated the waxy material 
all the way up. And this, this particular foot has some concavity. On this side, you can see there's, there's a ledge here that also tells you that, along with a bunch of compression striations in the sole. But paying attention to the depth of the apex of your frogs and the depth and the commissures of your frog is very important. Just trying to get a clear picture of the lamina. The reason why we exfoliate the foot and get rid of the chalky material until it becomes waxy is because the waxy material is actually the sole plane. And what we understand is that the sole itself, once it becomes waxy, it grows evenly from the bone. Now, in this particular slide, you can see this is a, there's a giraffe foot, but you can see where it's waxy, the first layer, and where you should stop, but you can also see the length or the width of the next layer and also a second layer. The sole grows evenly from the bone. That is our best medial lateral balancing guide for balance. Once we start to actually accurately map out the foot, the very first thing that we're going to do again is relocate our dimple in the back part of the foot. Again, that correlates with the little indention, and I always kind of think in my mind, it's where the tissue of the frog comes down and the tissue or the tissue of the heel bulb comes down and the tissue of the frog meets and there's just a slight indention on either side of that. So we'll relocate our dimple in the back part of the foot. Okay. The second thing we do in our hoof mapping is find the true apex of the frog. Now we've already done that once in our assessment, but we will go ahead and relocate that. Just double check it and mark it. Now that we've got everything exfoliated, I'm actually gonna take and just scrape some of this dirt off of this. And see if I can actually see where that tissue changes. So the tissue changes right there. But we'll take our, the length of our central sulcus, double that, and now we've double checked our true apex of the frog. Right there. Now, first thing, dimple. Second thing is the true apex. There's two ways to find it. One is where the tissue ends. Two is double checking it with the central sulcus. The third thing we're gonna do is find the widest part of the foot. Now on this foot, it actually shows you quite, quite easily some of the landmarks. It's a really a good foot to map to, to show you. The first thing that we're gonna do to help assess that is measure one inch back from the true apex of the frog. So one inch back from the true apex of the frog is right here which is really interesting because if you look at the lamina and the striations of the bar, as it comes down like this, the bar terminates here. Boom. Same thing with this one on this side. It comes down right along here and terminates there. So the first measurement is one inch back from the true apex of the frog. The second assessment is where the termination of the bars are. The third thing that we look at is the widest part of the sole. And it's really important that we try to measure this and mark right on the edge of the sole and not the edge of the wall. The reason for that is because the wall stretches, flares, cracks. It does all sorts of things once it is distorted and grows beyond the level of the sole. So the interesting part of this is that once we've drawn the sole wall junction right on the edge of the sole, you can take the wall out of this and look at how symmetrical that foot is. Symmetry we're finding has a lot to do and once we've found the balance of the foot. 
When you put the wall back in there though, you can see it's flared here, stretched here, stretched here, and stretched here. So it's, this line helps us with the widest part of the foot, but it also starts to draw your eye to the symmetry if we were to cut this thing in half of this side and this side if you take the wall out. So by using the widest part of the sole, what we'll do is we'll take and lay our rasp down evenly and slide it across until you see the widest part of the sole. And we'll make a mark, which is about right there. Do the same thing on both sides. One inch back from the true apex where the bars terminate and the widest part of the sole. If one of these things don't match up, what we do is take the best two out of three. We'll take and we'll line that up, but you can see that that's fairly close. And there is our widest part of the foot. The fourth thing we do is measure from the widest part of the foot an inch and three quarters for the tip of P3. And a quarter of an inch past that is our starting point for what we would call either where you would roll the toe, have your break over, or uh, the mechanics in your shoe that has a uh, breakover in it, but we have found that a quarter of an inch in front of the tip of the bone is a great place to start. The last thing that you need to do is draw in your pillars. Your pillars generally end or start, whichever way you want to look at it, about the apex of your frog. And it's just a more dense tissue underneath the coffin bone. The last thing that we do after we've got the foot completely mapped out is evaluate our ratios. So if you remember where the heels end, okay, in relationship to the widest part of the foot before we have about an inch and a quarter To the front of that foot, we have three inches. So it's more than two times in front than there is in back. If you do the same thing on this side, it's about the same. Inch and a quarter to three inches. After we improve our ratios and get our heels to a zero position, we're looking to see if we get the heels to a zero position, will we be at least 50-50? And the answer is yes. If you do this measurement and you flip it forward and you cannot achieve at least 50-50, if you are ending ahead of that, you need to go back and revisit your map. And that is our Live Soul Hoof Mapping Certification. That's the process that we're going to go through, so remember to evaluate your distortions, exfoliate all of the chalky material until it becomes waxy, and then draw your map on there. If this is something that you want to do or you want to go through the certification process of the ELPO, it's really important that you take the time to practice this on as many feet as you can. Do a foot a day. It doesn't take that much. If you're going to come and it's a month away, do a foot a day. You'll show up and it'll be easy for us to help you through some of the things that you may not understand. The purpose of the live soul hoof mapping is so that we can recognize and start to assess the current state of the hoof when we pick it up. And it gives us a map of where to go and what to do, what to take, and to assess the overgrowth. Because really, hoof distortion or hoof capsule distortion is just overgrowth. So hopefully this is helpful and we hope to see you soon.